what are the sort of really popular kinds of content that you deliver on that? The, the, the things that really engage with those fans in Singapore, Kuala Lumpur? Yeah, well, I think increasingly it will be content that's driven from the perspective in that market. So we're in the process of adding resource in China. Uh, and we've also added uh, a journalist uh, doing live feeds and live broadcasts and live voiceovers um, of the various pieces of content that we're already making. But I think it's making it as relevant as possible. So we have a show called Arsenal 360, um, which is a complete view of the club on a weekly basis. That has proven to be incredibly successful. And in fact, in one nine-month period in Malaysia, that program was the highest rated program on this cable sports channel. It was actually more highly rated than live Premier League programming during that period of time. We were able to drive a big audience there, I think it really by virtue of the fact that no one had ever done anything like that before, and we had taken that marketplace into consideration when we had put that show together. Uh, increasingly in markets where language is a big barrier, like China, as I said before, we've got people with microphones in their hands speaking the local language, talking about things that they know are relevant to the people back home. Um, uh, and what they think they want to know about their experience, whether it's at Emirates Stadium or it's in and around the training ground. I mean, the opportunities in overseas markets are clear. What are the big challenges that you face? Well, they're very far away. Um, uh, they require a lot of effort to pick yourself up and to move over. Um, you know, you've got the cultural barriers, the language barriers. Um, and, and really, because they are such big markets with big potential, one of the biggest challenges we have is trying to identify where to prioritize our limited resource. I mean, that's one of the biggest challenges. You've got so many growth markets around the world. I think depending on how you define an emerging market, you've got a third of the world's population today living in cities that would be characterized as cities in emerging markets. We're a football club. We have 380 employees. How can we possibly begin to attack all of those opportunities? So that, that's, a, that's quite a big, big piece of it. I think another challenge is moving away from the traditional model that football clubs typically operate, and that really is centered around your stadium and, uh, and match day. You know, there's a reason that 40% of our revenues come from our stadium. That has been the focus of football clubs. They believe that their business is in monetizing the audience in and around the stadium. You've got to think about your business, and we are no different. We have to think about our business in a far broader way in order to begin to capitalize on the opportunity that's represented in all of these developing markets. And who now do you see as your competition in these markets? Is it local sport? Is it other football clubs from across Europe and beyond? Or is it even other leagues like the, the NBA, the NFL are very well organized and very ambitious in the same market? Yeah, I think certainly all the people you mentioned would be competitive uh, because they're out in the market having conversations with the same broadcasters trying to get make the same inroads with them. They're having conversations with many of the same brands. I mean, everyone you mentioned is our, uh, is our competition would have loved to have the types of conversations we had with Emirates Airlines and had them as a partner and had been able to extend them. So we are in competition for those corporate dollars and for the, the, the media distribution. I think as I, th I look at our model and think where we're potentially vulnerable, I look at the NBA and, and the, uh, the leagues that are doing all of their business collectively, and I think that scale uh, gives them a, an advantage. When I go into an emerging market, as I mentioned before, we have a small staff and a small team of people. I have to build my business, everything we do in that market, from the ground up by myself. The leagues themselves within the NBA and the NFL and, and other organized leagues around the world do all that work on behalf of their clubs. And so I'm a small business trying to give myself the type of scale that a league is building uh, in some of the same markets. And I think that both creates opportunities for potential partners to work with an individual brand like an Arsenal, but it also creates issues of scale that we, we struggle with. Tom, in any team sport, leadership on the pitch, on the field, is critical to success. How does that translate into the, to, to the business of sport? You're a highly experienced executive across a, 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 number of, uh, a number of sports. To you, what are the key qualities of, of leadership? I think, you know, sports is not a, an easy business. The issues and the challenges we all face around globalization are not really easy issues to solve. There are very few definitive answers. When you have a single product, you manufacture it, you take it to market, you understand your consumer. It's all very easy with a, a range of other types of products. We really can't control what happens uh, effectively on the field. So the product we're asking people to buy is oftentimes out of our control and sometimes it hinges on a late goal, a call by the official, a whole variety of things. And so the, the challenges I think are different. And therefore, I think it requires, sports in particular, requires strong leadership. You have to articulate a, a vision and a plan 
And as I said before, because we're small and because we lack resources, you have to stick to that plan. And I think, you know, there's the old expression, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. I think the, the biggest challenge and I think the most important thing in sport is to articulate where, you, where you're trying to go and make sure you marshal your resources in that area. Uh, we've tried to do that very effectively. We're lucky we have an incredibly supportive board that has shown amazing leadership. We have, an, a, 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 I think, a, a really well-positioned chief executive who leads from the top, and we've been able to drive through the organization the idea that as a football club, we can actually be leading the industry as we look to build a sustainable club that stands on its own two feet. And I think everyone in the club feels that sense of leadership, and I think it's, it's incredibly important in sport. Tom Fox, thanks very much indeed. Kevin, good to see you. Thank you.